Hey y'all, it's me Kevy. I'm just in the middle of editing and realized my audio is garbage. <laughs> I had a poor connection during our video call, so there's a lot of stuttering and garbled and, and just words missing. So instead of relying on the auto-generated subtitles like I usually do, I will be putting them in manually. So go ahead and turn those on so you can actually know what I'm saying. All right. Back to the video. Mwah. Hey y'all, it's me, Kevy. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for today's video because we are doing a collab with the BookTube Goddess. Yes, hey. Hey, I'm so happy Hi. to be here, Kevy. I am the BookTube Goddess, the number one dry queen booktuber on YouTube, but I think Kevy is giving me a run for my money. But I do. <laughs> book reviews in drag weekly on YouTube. And if you're into that sort of thing, I usually read uh, fantasy, science fiction, and horror, but I am doing something different just for Kevy today. Yay. Oh, I'm so excited. And of course, I'm happy to be number two to you. <laughs> <laughs> the BookTube guys and I decided to do a collab where we each have a video discussing a book we read together. Over on her channel, we read Pride and Premeditation, the character of Pride and Prejudice put into a murder mystery. And over here, we read a novel by one of my favorite authors, Mary Robert Reinhardt called Miss Pinkerton. It, it was such an older book because it was written in the 1930s, correct? Mm -hmm. And I was surprised how easy it was to read. The, the writing flowed very yeah. easily for me. And the chapters, for me at least, seemed to go by quickly. Um, I don't know if it was a style back then, but something that was kind of odd for me was the foreshadowing. Because like, she did a lot of, oh, and if only I knew such and such, or, and little did I know that soon I'll be strangled or, or lose my, or whatever. Um. <laughs> yeah, Mary Roberts Reinhardt is actually cited as creating the had I but known style oh, of murder is she? mystery writing. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so that is very characteristic of all of her mysteries. And I just, I love that. I thought it was used a lot. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but it makes sense now, yeah. knowing that her, she developed that that whole foreshadowing technique, or at least made it popular. I love Nurse Hilda. It's written in the first person, so we got a lot of Hilda, who's, I guess, her nickname or her secret agent name. I don't know what you'd call that. It's Miss Pinkerton. So she is the titular character. Thank you. Oh, my tits. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, she was a delight, and I thought it was so funny that she seemed to never get any sleep. <laughs> That's sort of the running <laughs> joke throughout the entire thing. You just felt, felt so sorry for her because she was, like, always so sleepy. I, I, I guess I liked her, the inspector. What was his name? Inspector Patton. <laughs> I think it was Patton. Inspector yeah. Patton. He was, he was okay. Um, there were characters that I loved to hate like Florence, the uh, paralegal or the attorney secretary. Mm -hmm. She was a joy to hate. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, if you come into someone, if you come into your own room and you see someone using your makeup without permission, I mean, that is a red flag. I don't know. Yeah. That was a lot. Yeah, this was, I believe, the first novel starring Nurse Hilda Adam, but she had appeared in two short stories before this. I'm not surprised because it sort of opened with Nurse Hilda saying something like, oh, I've, I've done this before. You know, this isn't anything new for her being used as sort of an undercover agent for, for this detective or this inspector. It, it felt as though there were more stories in the background uh, involving Hilda. Unlike authors like Agatha Christie and murder mystery authors of the time. Mary Roberts Reinhardt rarely had a recurring character. Mm. Like this was one of two. Well, it's, it's kind of interesting having a nurse as sort of your your detective, especially since she does like work for the police. It's not like she just happens to mm -hmm. come across murders every episode or every, every book, but uh, she's actually <laughs> being used as a... Uh, undercover agent. People need nurses. So 
<laughs> like her being a nurse, like not only acts as a cover because like it's a real thing, but it does get her like in with the people and give her an opportunity and insight. I guess we should mention what the murder was <laughs> that this book is based on. <laughs> oh yeah. In Miss Pinkerton it starts out with this guy dying. Herbert has died and nobody knows if it was an accidental shooting, a suicide, or a murder. So they bring in <laughs> Miss Pinkerton to act as his aunt nurse because his aunt is old and frail. And while she's there, figure out who the hell did it. <laughs> right. Somehow they're down on their luck, this family, even though they come, they were at one time prominent rich socialites. But somehow Herbert has this life insurance for like, what, $100,000, which must be enormous back in the 30s. So mm -hmm. it's like that mystery is thrown in. And then there are like mysterious characters popping up every, every I don't know, other <laughs> chapter. Did you at any point suspect who done it? I suspected a lot of people. Because I know we on Twitter, you, you said, oh, you found it like really early in the book. I was not that early. Um, and I blame you, Kevy, <laughs> because <laughs> cause I, I saw your video on Reinhardt and you said she was the, um, she was responsible for the butler did it. So I, I suspected the butler and or the maid for a large part of this book. <laughs> And I didn't really figure out who the actual murderer was until until the signing of the legal document. Then I was like, what's going on here? Because of the folded paper. And, was, and, and that was very suspicious. So, yeah, I, I, I got thrown a lot. She, she put a lot of red herrings in and I followed each one. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah, the legal document was pretty suspicious. I figured out who done it on page 40. Oh my god. <laughs> Not me. Yeah, you know. because on page 40, the inspector is laying it out to Miss Pinkerton, and he's like, okay, it has to either be the butler or the maid. Mm. So it's like, okay, it's not them. <laughs> Who else have we met at this point? We've met a doctor and a lawyer, so it's gotta be one of them. The The morning after the murder happened, first thing, the lawyer is there in that room. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, it has to be him. <laughs> I have to say that doctor became an asshole real quick. It's like, I was fine <laughs> right. with him, and then at the end, he sort of turned. I was like, what, what's up with this doctor? I was, he... <laughs> well, I mean, he didn't know that the nurse was working with the police. Right. So, like, he just sees this nurse delivers a some medication and almost immediately the bitch dies. <laughs> right. She had no connection to what's her name is Juliet. There was be no motivation. It would be coming way out of the blue of why she would even murder her. But this doctor was <laughs> convinced. Right. There, there was absolutely no murder motive on her part, but she did have the best opportunity. Yeah. Well, she did give the injection, so. Right, exactly. Um, the, what, the one part I wanted to mention that I didn't really like about the book was it seemed as though Hilda didn't really solve the mystery. It was all the inspector. Because we, we go through all that with him, and then he just sort of explains it all and info dumps it at the end of, of what happens. So I was like, oh, I would have rather had Pinkerton or Hilda do all the explaining. Miss Pinkerton is not so much the Poirot of this novel, not the Sherlock Holmes. She's more of the Hastings or the Watson. She's not able to put it all together. And a couple of things, the detective knows that he's not sharing for some reason. Oh, that annoyed me. That annoyed me too. It's like, <laughs> it's like holding information back and you're like, oh, if, if only Hilda would know. Oh, I also thought that this book was really funny, especially the part where the reporters climb up onto the roof and she's like, nah, fuck this shit and knocks the ladder <laughs> over and straps them up there. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yes. I wonder if um, maybe you would know in other 
Hilda Adams uh, novels or stories, does she solve the murders more than she did in Miss Pinkerton? Or is it always the inspector that's the mm. mastermind? I was so excited when you told me that there was a movie for this book. Yeah. That was so exciting because, well, back in the day, they made a bunch of movies based on her book. There hasn't been one since 1959. Wow. <laughs> and a lot of them, because they were from Silent Era and stuff, were lost. I didn't realize going into this that there was a movie to watch. Yeah, I'm not sure how I found that trailer. I, I must have typed in Pinkerton into YouTube or something. I saw that it was a movie, black and white, from the 30s, starring Joan Blondell. And if you don't know who that is, she was in Greece. She was Frenchie's, the, the older waitress that tried to give Frenchie advice in Greece. Anyway, she's a <laughs> very retro actress that no one remembers too much about anymore, but she was <laughs> a delay. First of all, it was way too short. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was 60 minutes. I guess maybe that's how long movies were back then. And I can kind of understand if it wasn't so popular because unless you read the book, it was very confusing because things were happening <laughs> at, a, at a very fast pace. And there was a lot going on. But I have to tell you, I love Joan Blondell's Miss Pinkerton. I thought she was so great with those huge eyes and that bleach blonde hair. I, I enjoyed the movie uh, quite a bit. I really enjoyed her as Miss Pinkerton. I thought it was kind of funny, though, that like she was bottled blonde and had all like her whole face done all the time because in the book like she's always so tired yes like <laughs> she seems like the kind of person who just like she wouldn't waste her energy on her behavior like no she got to get up get her job done and get some sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was gonna say they changed the beginning because rather than her being um used by the inspector as an undercover agent. She was just plucked from this pool of nurses. That was the only big, big change. I think they followed the book pretty well. The movie also really played the romance between Miss Pinkerton and the detective. <laughs> of course it did. <laughs> but mm -hmm. there was, there was like, it came from nowhere. This is also, I didn't like this part of the book because at the very, very last paragraph or two, it was sort of insinuated that the detective was like, well, I have another job for you that you'll really like. And so he was like asking her to marry him or something. And it just seemed mm -hmm. to come from nowhere. But I think they took that little little spark at the end and just blew it up in the movie version. Oh, they, they, and they really turned Nurse Hilda Adams into a scream queen. Oh, yes. <laughs> Joan Blondell oh, could wow. scream. <laughs> There was a lot of, I guess it was, maybe that's how they made films back then, but there was a lot of like overacting, like the villain was like almost at a 90 degree angle coming at people, oh, yeah. you know, bent over at the waist with, with his hands like claws. It, it was a little bit over the top. Well, it was a lot over the top. Mm -hmm. I felt throughout that moments like that and all the like overacting, it, those felt like remnants of of the silent film era yeah. that were bleeding through. Because, yeah. I mean, this, only, this was made in 1932. So they'd only wow. had talkies for, like, how many years? Like, two, three, five? But I think they were still adjusting to how to film for talking pictures. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, though. It was. You should link the trailer uh, to this movie below. Yeah, no, I'll definitely have the, the video link down below, as well as the link to your video on your channel. Overall, I loved the book so much. Apart from The Great Mistake, it's my favorite Mary Roberts Reinhardt that I've read. Wow. Like I said, I would have enjoyed it. I would have enjoyed it more if she solved the mystery rather than the being the Watson to the inspector's homes. Yeah. Um, other than that, I I was really surprised at how easy it was to read. I don't think uh, people should be put off the since this is an author, you know, back in the 30s or 20s, that the writing would be inaccessible because it is not at all. It is very easy to read, very well paced. If she is the um, progenitor of the, if I only knew, vein of foreshadowing, now I really feel like rereading it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, just, just so I can get more of a sense of how 
Reinhardt developed that um, style of writing because it is pretty unique. Or maybe I should just read the sequel. Or any, any number of her books. Thank you so much for coming on my channel and talking about this book with me. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, and um, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if it pleases and sparkles, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>